Is it all right? Do we have permission to say that we don't love Halloween? You might get some uh, pushback. Well. Well, don't speak for Fallon. I like Halloween. I mean, I prefer Christmas. But, I mean, Halloween's legit. I like Arbor Day. <laughs> Do you dress up like an, like an oak? Mm-hmm. I like a sycamore. <laughs> I, I think you're more of a willow. <laughs> <laughs> a weeping willow? Aww. Yeah. <laughs> Probably open. <laughs> Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Thank you. Have a seat, everybody. Thank you for being here. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Let us start with this. Uh, half of our audience from Serums just now sobering up from Friday. <laughs> Staff included. Staff included. Photographer Eric just rolled in from the weekend. That's right. So executive producer Jeff got here about an hour ago. So we, we, had, a, we had a really good time. All kidding aside, you're going to be seeing a little behind the scenes package a little bit later. I said it at the end of the show on Friday, but it was a little rushed. So I just want to say it again. Thanks to our staff and all of you that came out to a bar at 10 a.m. Uh, to have some Halloween fun with us. I appreciate it. I really do. Our behind-the-scenes crew worked their butt off, and uh, we just, uh, we, we, I just appreciate them uh, a ton this morning. Let's get started with today's show. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. That's right. One more. So good. Uh, I could listen to this all day. So good. Audience, give it up for Fallon, everybody, filling in for Kendall. A friend. A friend. Yeah. How you doing, friend? Good. How are you? Ah, uh, good. I just rolled in from Anoka, too, so that's good. Yeah, no. I know. You texted me Saturday. You guys were there again. We went back on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't, you know, my mother, Hydar, my mother had the dogs, so we were kidless, oh. which rarely happens, so I'm grateful to her. Um, so, no, we went back out, because, you know, Friday, you're kind of, you know, we were kind of working, and yeah. I was a little tired. I left in the afternoon, but I went back, and I got to tell you, <laughs> I have a story for you. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Oh, no. 99.99% 90, of the people that I encountered over the weekend, uh -huh. lovely, lovely. And I, I, and, and I mean that. And the audience is laughing because they know there's a but. So, yeah, so what's the point? <laughs> here's the story. Like? Yeah, okay. Here, here's yeah. the story. Yeah. We get to the end of Saturday. Mm. So I've had Friday, and I'm, I say this a lot. The more I do the job, and you and I have talked about this, kind of the more introverted I become. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not good at small talk, and, and people can read me as being aloof. It's not aloofness. I'm just, I, I don't know what to say with small talk anyway. So we get, we get done with Friday, a lot of people. Then Saturday, a lot of people. And we get to the end of Saturday night, okay? So now this is right, right around 9 o'clock, and we're at, a, we're at a little restaurant bar near Anoka, and I'm uh, sitting there with Colin. And this woman comes up to me. She comes up to the group, my little group here, and she leans over and she kind of drapes herself between Colin and myself, Colin being my spouse. And she looks at both of us, and then she looks at me, and she says this. Ugh, your husband's a lot hotter than you are. Night over. 
Evening's <laughs> over. <laughs> Time to put Jason to bed. What, like, what are you supposed to respond? Like, oh, you're right. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm gross. I, I normally, yeah. I normally, and everybody, Jeff, and everyone that with, with me socially can tell you, I have a long fuse when it comes to this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, when people pull me over, I'll take pictures, I'll, I'll do whatever. But there's, I do have a line, and that is the line. <laughs> That's fair, fair. So I looked at her, I looked at her, and I'm like, you are rude. Yeah. Good. You yeah. are incredibly rude. Yeah. I go, why would you say that to somebody? Mm -hmm. And I just, I felt like Sally Field at the end of Steel Magnolias. I just kept repeating myself. I was like, you're rude. What you're she, rude. What I just kept say? saying it yeah. over. She didn't say anything. She walked my way. Oh. Like nothing. So I think she might have been a little embarrassed, but Good. I'm just telling you, I just, I, again, I say, I was raised differently. My mother, I'm, uh, again, Dar raised me with manners. You don't say that mm -mm. to people. You no. just don't. And it, it is true. My husband's very good looking. He but is, yeah. You don't need to tell the 49-year-old that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I agree, yeah. No, that's I rude. have a mirror. Yeah. Okay. One thing that I've learned and been told is when someone says something rude to you, ask them to repeat it. And then they realize how rude they are. So I you say, I love that. Yeah. So you go, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? And then they usually, of a normal person, will be like, oh, that was really rude. I shouldn't repeat that. That is the best life advice I've gotten in years. I'm going to do that next time. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm not encouraging you to say that to me anymore, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. You are ugly. Anyway, uh, <laughs> first up, first up, uh, you know what we're starting with. A sad start to the dish today as we remember Matthew Perry. Very odd to say that. Really, we do this, we cover celebrity deaths all the time. As I got DM'd by a lot of people over the weekend, this one just hits differently. I'm sure everyone uh, was shocked when they saw the news early Saturday night that Matthew had died in his home in L.A., Emergency crews responded to Perry's home on a cardiac arrest call from Perry's assistant, um, finding uh, Matthew unresponsive in his hot tub. He was uh, sadly declared dead at, at his house, and he was only 54 years old. Oh. I, 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 every DM I got from people, because I had posted it, I oddly, strangely, found out about this about a minute before the woman came up to me. Uh, so I was kind of like dumbfounded by that. You, you read it like three times, you're like, no, 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 right. no, no. That can't be true. But everybody's response to me was, this one hits different because I think he's just a touchstone for all of us. Mm -hmm. And when you think of friends, that show is about youth. So you never think of them as mortal. You think of Monica and Chandler and the actors that portray them mm -hmm. as not mortal, that they're going to be around forever. Matthew obviously will forever be known as Chandler from Friends. Not only was the show a huge hit right away over there on NBC, but it gained an entirely new audience on streaming and repeats on cable. Here's just a few. We thought you would enjoy this. A few of uh, Matthew Perry's iconic moments on Friends. I don't want to be single, okay? I just, I just, I just want to be married again. <laughs> and I just want a million dollars. Every week, the TV guide comes to Chandler and Joey's apartment. What name appears on the address label? Oh, Chandler gets it! It's Chandler Bing! No! I'm afraid the TV guide comes to Chenandler Bong. <laughs> right away or do you have some time we got some time okay should we get some coffee sure okay. where <laughs> so that last scene there in our montage that's from the final episode of Friends that aired in 2004 that's hard to believe that was in 2004 
The cast of Friends was extremely close, and none of the other five actors have commented on Matthew's death yet. And good. I, I, I saw some people actually defending that. Mm -hmm. They're like, I hope people aren't badgering them. Let them be. They'll yeah. respond. And if they do, they don't owe us anything. The show's creators, however, did release a statement saying, in part, he was a brilliant talent. It's a cliche to say an actor makes a, a role their own, but in Matthew's case, there are no truer words. This is truly the one where our hearts are broken. <laughs> that was okay. That, okay, hold on. That almost made me cry just reading that part. Yeah. But it, he had, I saw this, I think Rain Wilson tweeted this. It was, an, it was a fellow actor that said he was such a genius because he created his own comedic rhythm. Yeah. Think about the Chandlerisms and how he would deliver a line. That wasn't in the script. Mm -hmm. That was Matthew Perry. That pivot scene, I'm so glad Jeff put in there. I saw in the reunion, they talked about this, the brilliance of Schwimmer and, and Matthew Perry, they didn't tell them to say that line like that. That's, that scene is genius because of those two. Oh, yeah. He always, yeah, he just the quick wit that he always had. And his cadence. Yep. He had a rhythm with his, I, could I be any more yep. irritated? You know, <laughs> that's, that's Matthew Perry. Mm -hmm. The Friends cast, as you know, reunited for a special reunion on Max a few years ago. And one scene that a lot of you are circulating on social media um, is this one. The best way that I can describe it is after the show was over at a party or any, any kind of social gathering, if one of us bumped into each other, that was it. That was the end of the night. You just sat with that sat with the person mm -hmm. all night sure. long. I remember that. And that was it. You apologized to the people you were with, but they had to understand you had met somebody special to you and you were going to talk to that person for the rest of the night. <laughs> And that's the way... I'm it, laughing, I'm crying, because it's so true. That's the way it worked. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. Yeah. It is generationally. It's uh, this is this rings different. As I said at the beginning of this, it, it hits differently. That show meant so much to so many people, and uh, you just kind of feel like you have one fewer friend. Yeah, and I'm so happy they did that reunion. Absolutely, they talked about right. it for years. Thank goodness they actually did it. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back.
Tomorrow is, you know, we had our Halloween show officially at Serums on Friday, but we are going to celebrate Halloween tomorrow. We've been planning this for, I'm just joking, we have no idea what we're doing tomorrow, <laughs> but we will have a costume. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. We, we're, we're vacillating between a couple, so yes. you'll find out what we decide on uh, when we air tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> TMZ was the first one to report on Matthew Perry's tragic death. Joining us live from Hollywood with the latest is our buddy Brad from TMZ. Hi, Brad. Hey, good morning, Jason. Um, broke on Saturday night. Here we sit on Monday morning. Uh, any new details right now? Well, nothing new other than what I can tell you, Jason, is the autopsy has been completed pending uh, results of a toxicology test. So, of course, that can take several months. Now, what we do know is on Saturday, uh, Matthew, earlier on in the day, he was playing pickleball, um, and his, he went home at some point, got in his jacuzzi, and his assistant, after a few hours, came back to check on him. And, uh, and found him deceased in the jacuzzi, obviously called 911, um, but it was too late there. So what I can tell you also is on Saturday, when we started to get information on, uh, on this potential death, we called someone who is in direct contact with Matthew daily, speaks to him all the time, um, and that person said, there's no way this is true. He's in a great place. He's sober. He's doing super well right now. So that just kind of shows you people around him how stunned they were because, look, he's been very open about his struggles in the past. We know the battles he's faced, but he had gotten healthy over the last few years. He was working on projects. He had a movie lined up. So it's really going to be interesting to see what the cause is here, what that toxicology result says, because we do know there were no illicit drugs found at the scene. Of course, he was on prescriptions. There were some antidepressants uh, and some anxiety medications there at the, host at the home. Um, but everyone's just really stunned by this. Absolutely. I mean, for heaven's sake, and not that this is any indicator, he sent the assistant out to get a new iPhone. So yeah. just routine stuff. Yeah, it, it, it was a normal Saturday. Yeah. Like, and, and think of it, Matthew Perry out playing pickleball, you know, someone who had been an addict and yeah. everything, and, and he was healthy and enjoyed that life. Uh, I saw the footage of Matthew Perry's family uh, driving yeah. up. What, what are they saying? Did they release a statement? Yeah, they did. Um, and it, it, it's brief, but it kind of encapsulates what we've been seeing. And, and they thank everyone for the love and the care. And they understand the happiness that Matthew has brought in so many people over the years. Um, and that's really all they said. And they thanked everyone for their well wishes and obviously said that they are devastated by this surprising loss. But uh, like you said there, those the images of the family showing up kind of as the world learned uh, were pretty haunting. Absolutely. Brad, have a good week, my friend. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. You too. You can get the latest at TMZ.com. I, uh, I love James Burroughs. Uh, uh, Jimmy Burroughs, you, you name a popular show uh, in uh, like the 90s or even the 80s. Uh, Taxi, Friends, Cheers, Will and Grace. That's Jimmy Burroughs. Uh, he directed many Friends episodes. His post killed me. Like, uh -huh. that was the one that just knocked me down. He, he just, it was a picture of Jimmy and Matthew on the set, and, and Jimmy just wrote, nobody did it better. Mm. Nobody did it better. And you really, look, I'm a nerd, so I, 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 I love, I, you know, devour stuff about shows like this. You gotta, you, show me a list of perfectly cast shows, and I mean perfectly cast. Friends has to be top three. Mm -hmm. If you remove one of those people, the show is different. I mean, other shows have great casts, you know, big ensembles. But think of the perfection of that cast. And go back and watch the pilot. I know a lot of you are probably going to watch. Go back and watch the pilot. I challenge you to find another pilot episode. Which pilot episodes are sometimes terrible. Terrible. <laughs> they are. Um, but go back and watch that pilot. You know every single character by the time that episode is done. You know what makes every one of them tick. Mm -hmm. You know that Rachel's spoiled. You know that Chandler is the smart aleck. That's a combination of the writing and the acting. Absolutely. And Matthew Perry is at the top of that. It also just seemed like they you never heard anything bad about any of them off the set either. Like they got along 
truly well, yeah. which made it even better because it made you feel like they genuinely, genuinely were friends. Well, they made that pact, mm -hmm. you know, where they had parity. They they did. They went into Warner Brothers and said, "You're going to pay us all the same mm -hmm. because we don't want the fighting yep. that other shows have." More just for you now. Just over two weeks to go until the new season of The Crown starts streaming on Netflix. Now, this debuted last week, but we had the Halloween show, and you know we. So this is such a good trailer. Last week, late last week, we got our first look at the beginning of the final season. Look at this. We finally succeeded in turning this house upside down. It's nothing less than revolution. That's never my intention. Set against a background of raw emotion, the royal family remained silent. What do people want from me? For you to be mother to the nation. You've seen the images on the television. Diana gave people what they needed. All over the world, in their thousands. And they adored her for it. This is going to be the biggest thing that any of us has ever seen. The first, the first part of season six, you see it right there, uh, documents the death of Princess Diana and the direct aftermath. And part one starts streaming November 16th. I did not love, they, they changed the cast last year as they do as the shows went on. I didn't love the cast last season. No. I'm loving the way they look in this season. She looks just like that era of Diana. Yeah, Charles, on the other hand. Not so much. Nope. No. I mean, what a glow up Charles had. I know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. And the Queen, I'm so glad they're going to I'm, they're going to cover because I'm old enough to remember the queen did not come off well. Mm. Uh, remember that the queen did not. She what was it a week? She didn't give a statement for a week. And then it was oh. kind of like then she got up and made the statement and everyone's like, please. She did not recover public relations wise for a long time. Oh, yeah, um, it was they did not handle Diana's death well at all. Next up, a battle between some movie theaters and the studio behind the Martin Scorsese film Killers of the Flower Moon. Listen to this. So the movie is three and a half hours long. OK, right? <laughs> See, audience, <laughs> studio audience, this show's only an hour. You're good, yeah. So listen to this. Some independent theaters added intermissions to their showings. <laughs> they gave, yeah. yeah. Right? OK. Yeah. They gave them an eight minute potty break uh, to stretch <laughs> their legs, go to the bathroom, refill their popcorn buckets uh, without missing anything. But as executives do, this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> the studio says the intermissions violate their licensing agreement. The theater, yeah. The, uh, the, we don't care, theater company or movie companies, we don't care. The theaters say customers love the breaks and they wish they could keep doing them for long movies. I gotta tell you, Warner Brothers, Apple, 20th Century, Disney, if you want us back in movie theaters, and I'm a big advocate for that, mm -hmm. um, you shouldn't be nitpicking crap like this. You should be celebrating and thanking these independent theater companies for doing this because it's getting butts in seats. Yeah. Because, yeah, any means possible. Because, sorry, Warner Brothers, our butts get sore. You know what I mean? Three <laughs> and a half do. hours. They do. Daddy has to pay. You know? <laughs> Daddy has to pay. Yeah. <laughs> you, need, you need to get a shirt with that. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy has to pay. Daddy has to pay and get some goobers. You know what I mean? I need a break. I need a little break. It doesn't have to be eight minutes. Give me six minutes. You know? Oh, wait, for the women's restroom. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Think of us in these times. I, I will, yeah. It's like, or like, you know, open up an extra men's restroom for us to use that yeah. can be monitored or something. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> but can I say on that topic, um, <gasps> men are getting just as bad with cell phones. Um, um, men sit and they scan the sports page or whatever it's called and it's like do your business and get out there's a yeah. whole line you need to be careful doing that because it's how you get hemorrhoids <laughs> Leo, take five. The more you know, shooting star. Yeah. 
Hey, Jeff. It is. Well, can, can you check uh, the annals of our show? Is that, and I probably should use oh, Okay. <laughs> Unbelievable choice of words. And while checking, grab some prep age. Yeah. <laughs> Let us move on. <laughs> she made me do it. Uh, a new episode of Saturday Night Live aired this weekend, and the show poked, f poked fun at those Hallmark Channel movies uh, and the endless array of them. This is funny. Look at this. From the Hallmark Channel. The last thing Kelsey Gordon expected was to be reunited with her high school crush turned hometown killer. But sometimes life comes up with other plans in A Stab at Love. I didn't come to Adam Hollow to be stalked by a serial killer. I have a career in New York to get back to. Well, I don't know if that's what he has in mind. With two almost attractive actors with almost human sounding names, starring Gashley Griegert and Bren Klobog. Didn't you ever want to get out of Autumn Hollow? Try someplace new with all new people? No. Nah, these are my roots. I guess I just like killing people I know. I like that. From the producers of the Creep. Like that. Oh. <laughs> Comedian uh, Nate Bargatze. Uh, I, I have I didn't know him before the show. I, oh, yeah. Did you do you know him? Yeah, he's very. I mean, he's very funny. Yeah. So I, he is like of that kind of just gentle delivery. It's I don't know. Yeah. And also he's from Tennessee, so he has a little bit of that southern the southern charm vibe that I like. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, the Foo Fighters uh, was the musical guest. Well, <laughs> yep. Love fighting Foo. Fighting Foo. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. Creating magic with the stroke of a pencil. Coming up in just a little bit. Oh, oh. Come on, Nitty. We're going to talk to one of Disney's animators about what it's like to be part of the 100th anniversary of the company. And then a little bit later, we're going behind the scenes from our epic Anoka Halloween show. And we're going to open up the Jason Show mailbag to see what you have to say this week. That and more when we come back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Well, a few weeks ago, Disney celebrated its 100th anniversary with a new short film looking back at a century of iconic animated characters. It's called Once Upon a Studio. It's so good. Look at it. Is that it? They all gone? Oh, oh. Come on, Minnie. This is it. Let's get the gang. Picture time, guys. <laughs> okay. Come on, everybody. Here we go. <laughs> After premiering on the wonderful world of Disney on ABC, it is now available to stream on Disney+. Plus. Joining me live this morning is one of the animated artists wor who worked on the project, and she's from Minnesota. Give it up for Courtney DePaulo, everybody. Hi, Courtney. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Oh. We are really proud. We love Disney, and we love when a Disney employee were, it was from Minnesota. So thanks for <laughs> thanks for being here. Here's my here's my first question. Looking at uh, the 100 years and looking at Once Upon a Studio, what part? Uh, who did you draw? What team were you on for that short film? Um, I was on the the hand drawn team. Um, I'm a hand drawn animator, so uh, do all paper pencil drawings. Um, we all kind of split up and did a lot of assorted characters, so it's kind of a whole Where's Waldo situation. But uh, I was really happy to do Merlin um, from Sword in the Stone and um, his kind of teapot uh, magic <laughs> friends, so um, Mrs. Potts. And um, uh, if you have an eagle eye, there's a big bad wolf and a fox and the hound and... Did you do, okay, you said Fox and Hound. You know what's so funny, Courtney? That's, that's the first Disney movie. I'm 49, so when that came out, that was the first Disney movie that I remember seeing in theaters. And we got about halfway through that film, and I said to Colin, I said to my husband, I said, I haven't seen Copper or Todd yet. I haven't seen the Fox and the Hound. And then, boom, Copper and Todd <laughs> popped up. So 
So kind of explain if you could, because I, I think this is fascinating. So not only, you didn't just work on one character, so you as a, as a hand-drawn artist, you get to dabble in a few, in a few of the characters? Yeah, for a project like this one, because there are so I mean, there are hundreds of characters in this short. Yeah, um, we had to really kind of uh, take a take a bunch of them, which um, was really challenging. So usually, if you if you kind of go back to the old films, an animator would really be cast on one character and really learn how to draw that character. Um, but but for one like this, we had to be very flexible and adaptable and um, learn quite a few. Was that intimidating? Because as you said, I mean, you think of Mr. Goldberg with, with the genie and all of these animators that have uh, drawn these characters since the 30s and 40s. What, what character did you get a little nervous trying to bring to life in Once Upon a Studio? Um, I mean, I think Merlin, Sword in the Stone means a lot. Like you say, Fox and the Hound means a lot to you. Sword in the Stone means a lot to me. And I was so excited that they had cast me on that one. but kind of as soon as you get it and you're excited then you kind of switch to a, <laughs> a mode of like oh no i'm responsible for him and i really don't want to mess him up because you know if i were watching the short he he'd be one of the ones where i would be looking you know, for really, yeah i'd be excited to see him so i, w I would want him you know done done well so um you know yeah there's such a, a big legacy to the characters there's definitely a high standard and that can be intimidating Courtney, will you tell the folks, because it's so beautiful, our team was looking at the, the trailer, a little sneak preview. Tell the folks about Mushka, please. That's a project that you're on. Oh, yeah. So um, separate from Once Upon a Studio, um, Andreas Deja, who is also a, a Disney legend, um, he is responsible for, um, he, he supervised Scar and, and Lion King, Jafar and Aladdin. He did Lilo and Gaston. He's absolutely incredible yes um he parted ways with disney after um winnie the pooh their last hand-drawn feature um and has been working on this uh real passion project for the last 10 years um it's his first uh film that he's directed himself um also all pencil and paper and you know unapologetically drawn there's still that kind of sketchy quality to all of the drawings um and, and we've just finished it's, it which is really exciting and it's set in ukraine right we're, we we're, we're looking at a little bit of it about a little girl raising a, a tiger cub is that right that's the basis of the story yeah it's a, a young girl who adopts a tiger and kind of the the problems that that she faces um because unfortunately some people see a see a tiger as more valuable uh dead than alive and kind of what happens with that Courtney, my last question, you know, I, I love dreamers, uh, not to be cheesy, but, you know, I was once a kid that had a dream to be on TV, so I always love someone that follows their passion. Can you imagine, take me back to, uh, quickly, Courtney, growing up in Minnesota, would you ever believe that your employee badge would say the Walt Disney Company? No, not at all. They, I mean, Disney was really, like, my entry point into animation. They, um, so many of my favorite animators and like my first kind of animation heroes were Disney employees so it was um, so wild to suddenly be in an environment where you know so many of those original animators came back and so I was able to watch them bring their characters back to life and it was just it was mind-boggling it was a little hard to get my brain around sometimes absolutely well thank you for the magic that you create again cheesy but the truth thank you Courtney <laughs> thank you so much you can follow Courtney's work by finding her on Instagram, her handle at Courtney DePaula. That's nice. Can you imagine you dream about drawing and then you go to the mouse house? That's crazy. We're going to take a break. We're opening up the mailbag and you're going behind the scenes at our big show on Friday. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. We had so much fun, as I said at the top of the show, celebrating Halloween weekend at the Halloween capital of the world on Friday. Our entire broadcast moved to Serums in Anoka, Minnesota, where Halloween is the center of the universe. Thanks to everyone that came to our live show. Well, before everyone, well, some people were in line. Photographer Eric and executive producer Jeff got to know the people that waited in really cold weather for hours to get into our show. Take a look. 
You want to talk about what's going right there? Oh. World's largest pumpkin right there, people. 2,800 pounds. That's oh. like me after eating a bunch of wings at serum. <laughs> what time are you guys in line? Well, she actually got here at 4.30, but we were in line since 5.30. 5.30? Yeah. Yeah, I got here at about 2.00. What would you normally be doing at that time? Well, I'd be working. So you're skipping work today? Yeah. <laughs> wow. I am. Does your boss know? No. <gasps> no. Uh -oh. I called him. Oh. Okay. Called him sick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think this is a strong life decision then? Well, UPI sent you to fire me because they need people, so there you go. <laughs> but what about the packages people won't get today? Go find somebody. We got plenty of people. We'll get it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And what would you normally be doing at 6.30 in the morning on a Friday? Probably sitting on the couch drinking Baileys and watching TV. Baileys? <laughs> Both of you would be drinking? Well, at our respective homes. <laughs> is this like a codependent thing? Yeah, or... yeah. Hey, yes it is. And actually we have Baileys here this morning yes, too. Yes, we so. brought it along with when our caribou was done, we had a little coffee and a thermos and added our Baileys. You gotta stay warm, right? That's right. <laughs> Hold on kids, here's some okay. strong role models. <laughs> <laughs> Do you carry that everywhere you go? Um, not always, no. You know, but. if that's for water, you're probably going to yeah. need something bigger for hydration. No. No, that's my uh, whiskey. <laughs> no, it's on TV. Just say water. Wait, wait. <laughs> it's water. All right, there we go. So do you normally play cribbage at 6 in the morning? No. That's never. first for us. First? Yeah. So what were they doing, Jeff? Playing cribbage, Eric, at 6 in the morning. Oh. You know, usually board games are kind of dorky, but then you paired it with like waiting in line for the Jason show. So, uh, <laughs> way to go, guys. Makes it not dorky at all. <laughs> what do you guys think Jason should do since you were here so early? Oh, buy us a pull tab. Yes. Oh. oh, I don't like that. What's the most you've ever won on a pull tab? Probably 400. Oh, nice. I said we won a thousand with you once. Yeah, um, here's my tip. Drink a lot and then put down all your money. <laughs> <laughs> if Jason's mother-in-law is here, she's the greatest pull tap player love. in the world. I would love she should teach classes, have a TED talk. <laughs> I will film that. That sounds amazing. <laughs> Look at this, Prince is here. Prince is in the house. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sing a little Prince, as long as you got the thing going. Come on, let me. Uh, I don't want to break the camera. <laughs> <laughs> my voice is a little sore from last night singing, so I gotta perform again tonight. Just move your mouth, like kind of like Mr. Ed, and I'll put in some, like a Prince song. Okay. Here, here we go. Maybe I'm just too demanding. Maybe I'm just like my father. So when Dove's Cry sounds great on a Friday morning. Hi, I waited in line for four hours and all I got was this crappy grease. <laughs> Seriously. I think Jeff will uh, sign your chest if you want that, if it makes it any better. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. I'll, I'll keep the bracelet, thanks. All right. <laughs> uh, Jeff, another one turned you down. <laughs> another one turned him down. Best crew. <laughs> that was no joke. I mean, I was getting reports. Uh, I was doing the radio show, and Jeff and Eric were sending me reports of, like, they're lining up already. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. It's 6. The line's growing. So, And it was really chilly that day. Yeah. So thanks, everybody. And did you have a good time? Was your first time? I did, but I didn't realize all of the, your viewers are such booze hounds. <laughs> 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 they were, like, pulling. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to talk about our studio audience, but Cliff took five or six flasks oh. from these people today. So, yeah. Right, Cliff? Is it five or six? Yeah. We're going to take a break. We're opening up the mailbag when we come back. Back in a moment. Who's down? Double her flask. Just. It is time to read what you have to say about our show and us personally, our outfits, whatever. Let's open up the right. Jason Show mailbag. That's right.
always say we try to start with the positive, lead with the positive. First up, two sweet messages from our Facebook page. Let's start with Roberta. Hi, Roberta. She was, I just started watching, and it's the best hour of the day. I laughed the whole time. Aww. Thank you. Well, Roberta, we love, look, the people that have been with us, we appreciate, but new folks, you guys help our success, so I appreciate you. Well, really, spread the word to your friends. Uh, and Diane writes, Jason, you boost my mood every day. I laugh out loud while watching your road trips and seeing you crack up. Thanks for entertaining me every day. Let me, I'll, I, those road trips, and we're going to be doing more, more of them. Fallon's actually going to come with us for our next fast food uh, field trip. I, <laughs> Jeff can make me laugh more than mo like I laugh so hard with Jeff because we're the same person yeah. and again we can make fun of each other in areas where no one else is allowed mm -hmm. to make fun of you so next up some mess some messages about how awful Fallon is mm. I'm just joking I'm kidding <laughs> yeah man I'm used to it it's fine <laughs> no. I got it. She's getting nothing but love, so I got to tamper down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all about uh, our chemistry. Kathy says, I'm loving the chemistry of Jason and Fallon. So fun. Laugh out loud every time. And Rosie, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Rosie says, Fallon is doing an okay job. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Fallon is doing a great job. Uh, love her laugh, beauty, and genuineness. Oh. Girl. <laughs> beauty. Beauty and genuineness. Yeah, well, you know what? I wish Amazon had the same thought about me. <laughs> Tell them what Amazon said to you today. Well, first of all, I'm not knocking this size at all, so I'd like to start with that. But Amazon, <laughs> I was looking for a shirt, and it's like, I won't even say the size. We suggest this size for you, which is a, well, quite a bit larger than what I normally <laughs> wear. And I was like, mind your business, Amazon. I don't need your suggestions. Yeah. Like, tell me I need a smaller size to, like, boost me, and then I'll buy more from yeah. you. Yeah. The hell are you doing, Amazon? Maria is next. Hi, Maria. She goes, my mother and I really enjoy Fallon. She is so real, authentic, and hilarious. We're Aww. so glad she's filling in for Kendall. Okay, yeah. Thank you. We are, too. And... Ka and Shelly asks uh, uh, this question, can you tell me where Fa uh, Fallon got that awesome witch in her yard? Mm. I love this show so much and Jason and Fallon and Kendall. We're talking about your 12, decoration. 12 foot witch. Yes, um, she is from Home Depot, but she doesn't work anymore. Um, so we had her, we didn't plug her in for a long time because she scared the family. Um, so <laughs> she went through, you know, a lot of rain this year. So we think that may have caused some issues. She doesn't work at all now. So great investment. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Love that for me. She broke and that's really expensive. Yeah. I'm sure Jake loves that. Yeah, as they say, why spend less? That's right. <laughs> Next yep. up, many of you responded when I asked if the electric scent diffuser was worth it last week. Nicole says, my opinion of the machine is that it's a bit overwhelming. At first, it smelled amazing, but then it gets to be too much. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I was asking, because I love the smell of Weston Hotels, mm -hmm. and there's a really pricey Diffuser and I'm not cheap. Yeah, but I don't want it. It was like two hundred dollars, and I don't want to buy. I'm not gonna buy the thing if it's bad. It turns your house into an Abercrombie Collins shirtless when you enter. Yeah, and just spraying everything. everywhere. Every yeah, loud music. Yeah. Up next, I was never allowed in Abercrombie's. <laughs> <laughs> Up next. Oop. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Up next. Many of you uh, loved our first fast food field trip last week. Uh, mm -hmm. Executive producer Jeff and I visited. Well, and Eric too visited. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy's Wendy's to try the new pumpkin spice frosty and then we went over to Taco Bell to to try the test marketed chicken nuggets well Rebecca says you two kept me laughing a great comedy act yeah we're like Dean and Lewis I'm telling you uh, and Jan says this whole segment cracked me up poor Eric I hope you made it up to him yeah he, I mean we let him eat later. And Shannon <laughs> says, I thought the pumpkin spice frosty was fire. Uh, I had two of them, but my girlfriend thought it tasted like a Bath and Body Works candle. <laughs> uh, your girlfriend is right. I did not, just to recap, we did not give it a thumbs up. No. I, I thought it tasted like a Yankee candle. But Jeff's review of the chicken nuggets, they were chickeny. They were chickeny. Yeah. And he was good. quoted in the New York Times. That's right. <laughs> Finally, an email from Suzanne in reference to my story about going to the doctor for a lump only to find out that the lump was my rib cage. <laughs> 
She says, I cracked up when he told this uh, about your trip to the doctor. I know a guy who took his male cat to the vet for a bump on his tummy. He was worried it might be a tumor. Turns out it was a nipple. <laughs> I think that happened to photographer Eric once. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Right, Eric? Yes. It's. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. Oh, God. Have this love. Yeah. Have this love. Whoop, it's a nipple. shortest segment today a blast from the past for uh, for sale at urban outfitters the store is now selling apple ipods calling them vintage <laughs> the, re the refurbished ipods are fourth generation from 2004 it was before touchscreens so you still had to use that wheel to scroll through songs the crazy part is the price 350 dollars uh -uh. uh -uh. and it's already sold out people must not realize you can get the same ipods on ebay for around thirty dollars <laughs> we will be right back back in a moment there's our birthday guy right there i still have Welcome back. don't forget to get tickets to our show go to eventbrite.com and search for the chase tomorrow we're celebrating halloween officially paranormal investigator dave schraber is back Woo! yeah with, with his take on photographer Eric's overnight trip with the spooky dolls. That's right. That's tomorrow. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone.